six-year-old. There are kids around you now. We have a six-year-old that was raped in a mosque, in a holy place, by not one, not two, not three, ten men. So Boris Johnson, if you thought that you were just going to walk into number ten without a word Just over the road, we have number 10 Downing Street. Shall we take a walk over there and stand in front of the gates and you can speak to Boris? I can scream at him, yeah. Come, let's go, sister. This young lady's going to speak to Boris right outside of the gates of number 10 Downing Street. And this is the power of street camp. This is number 10 Downing Street and we're walking to number 10 Downing Street. So we're now outside of number 10 Downing Streets, the gate of number 10 Downing Streets, where our great speaker is now gonna give a message to Boris Johnson, who was elected as the leader of the Conservative Party, and he became prime minister of this great country only a few days ago. So what do you wanna to say to Boris? My message to is Boris that is there up. could be negotiations of an amnesty for those who committed crimes, for those who Absolutely killed. Not. Absolutely not. There is no such negotiation, and the Sudanese people will not and will not accept such thing. Tell me, you have such a great smile on your face when I look at this award. It's called the Active. Westminster Awards 2018 winner, then it says outstanding contributions to sport, leisure and physical activity awards from the city of Westminster. So, Mohammed, sir, tell me more about what you did to get this award. <laughs> Wendell Denner from Street Cam coming to you live and direct from opposite Downing Street where the Sudanese community are out here protesting because they are looking for freedom, peace and justice in their country. But don't forget, if you like Street Pan, subscribe to the channel, give me the thumbs up and make your comments. So that's subscribe, give me the thumbs up and make your comments. If you do subscribe, please remember to ding, 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 ding. You must always switch on your personalized notification bell because when you do, you will be informed when Street Cam is uploaded. Don't forget that Street Cam, we will record events normally on a Saturday and we will upload on YouTube on a Sunday at 10 o'clock. So, when Street Cam records these events on a Saturday, we will upload them on YouTube at 10 o'clock on a Sunday. So make sure that whoever is watching this throughout the world, that 10 o'clock British time, you are ready to get your... Ding, ding, ding.
بتاعنا نسوي جديد يا ثوره في دمي راجيك طول عمري تلهبني نار الشوق كل الصغار نادوك باسم الوطن سموك سموكي سموكي في مطلع الشارع نطعم طفل جاية يا شعب يا راية زلزل جبال الخوف أحرق حريق الجوف أسطط طرم معروف عدي وطن طافي عدي وطن طافي لا فيه قبلية لا فيه جهوية سرقة وعرب ما في سرقة وعرب ما في وعشان نهو السودان وعشان نهو السودان وعشانك يا سودان عنجيب مدنية وعشانك يا سودان عنجيب مدنية As you can see behind me there are just a couple of the faces of some of our brothers, sisters, mothers, aunties that we have lost in this revolution. Um, this is a small percentage. We know that this is well in the thousands of how many we've lost. You can see that we've got obviously blue for the martyrs, Matar, his color. And we have also got pink for our Kandakas, which I'm going to take a moment to explain. Kandaka is a Nubian word. It is one of the indigenous languages of Sudan. Kandaka was referred to a Nubian strong warrior queen. That is the meaning behind it. It is now used to dub every single Sudanese lady here in the UK, America, Sudan. Every single woman that has stood out, stood despite what has been happening to them. Despite all the torment, despite all the torture, despite the threats, and despite what, of course, the rape. Rape has always, for a long time, been used as a tool of political gain. The women have been raped because you know why? That is the motto of our regime. Break the women, you break the men. So if you break the women, you break the men, the whole revolution falls down. مدنية خيار الشعب حرية سلام وعدالة مدنية قرار الشعب والشعب الطيب صابر مطبوح الروح والثورة والشعب الطيب صابر مطبوح الروح والثورة والدم يبني الثورة 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 والدم they are walking around Sudan now, their heads hanging in shame. Some of them haven't even been able to tell their families about what's happened to them because they're worried. They think they are the ones to blame. They carried this revolution for us. They lost the thing that's the most precious to them for us. We have a six-year-old. There are kids around you now. We have a six-year-old that was raped in a mosque, in a holy place. By not one, not two, not three, ten men. It's not a thought that I want to put into your minds, but we have to right now. Imagine that ten men doing that to a six-year-old. Imagine her life now. At six, what do you remember? Because believe me, at six you still remember. Those memories are still with you. It's an age where you still have your memories. When she grows up, what is she going to remember? We can't let that be in vain. We have to keep on fighting because, like I said, they lost what is most precious to a woman. It was taken from them. And we need to empower them. We need to remind them that no matter what, you are higher than a Kandaka. You are much higher than a Kandaka, a much higher level. These are women that we need to empower again and remind them that they have not lost that respect. That they are still queens that there are men out there who will still respect them. There is no need to hang their head in shame and rather they should lift their heads up high because they did that for our country. They did that for our people. They did that for our freedom. They did that so we could have our rights back. They did that so that the diaspora could return back to our homeland that's worth living in. <laughs> We are sitting here, I overheard the conversation.
conversation, you know, by one of the Khalsas today, and I think what she said is really beautiful. Um, we are sitting here, we are safe, yes. We have no physical harm to our bodies. But the torment that's been happening to us mentally, the torments that we felt in our hearts is indescribable. But we still need to compare it to what's going back home. And do you know how we help each other? By opening those channels of communication. It's okay to tell them you're hurting. And it's okay to listen to the fact that they're hurting. Let them tell their stories. I know it's hard for us to hear. But we have the support of each other to be strong for one another. So let them listen to their stories. Empower them to tell their stories. To open up because holding it inside is not the answer. Holding it inside is not going to help. Holding it inside means that we are the ones that are going to break our women. And we're not going to allow that to happen. We are empowering our women. This is a woman's revolution. But I've always said that this is a revolution that's happened because we stood side by side. We're always standing side by side. Look at it right now, the irony. I'm at the front, look who's behind me. Look who I have behind me, these are my brothers. People that I've just met today, I met yesterday, but the love is there. They've got my back and I've got theirs. That is how our revolution's going. I've got my mothers, I've got my fathers, I'm not letting anybody down. And that's how we all are, that's our mentality. We're not gonna let anyone down. We're gonna stand, we're gonna fight, but there is a lot more that we need to do. It's all about rehabilitating these people. We need to bring them back into society. We need to bring our migrants back into society. We need to bring the people that were hurt and broken back into our society. Open up your arms. Hold on to them side by side. This, uh, this man right here, he could be my father. <laughs> What stops him from being my father? Nothing. Nothing. Because he is my father. It's my mother. It's my brother. This is my brother. These are my sisters. This is a country we're trying to fight for our young, young, young siblings here. We can't allow this. And we haven't allowed this. And we've stood strong. But this is a fight that we're going to be fighting for years. This is not going to finish in one day. This is not a win that we're going to achieve in five minutes. This means standing together united and making sure that we empower each other and we always give each other the strength. And we stand by what our national anthem tells us and we be the nation that gives courage to all our African nations to do the same. Because this is not an issue that is just in Sudan. The Janjaweed is not an issue that just affects Sudanese people. These people will take over the whole of Africa, believe me. Believe me, it will not stop at Sudan. It never stopped at Libya, it never stopped at Palestine, it never stopped at Syria, it never stopped at any of these other countries. What makes Sudan different? Ask yourself that. When are we going to say enough is enough? <laughs> We need everyone's backing right now. If you care about humans, if you care about yourself, you care about this cause. Because this could happen to any one of you. Anyone. Yeah, the Janjaweed is now in Yemen. They've stolen our children, our children, yeah, to go and kill Yemeni people. They have made the same agreement in Libya now. While we're still fighting, they have still made the same agreement to send soldiers into Libya. These are not soldiers, these are militias, brainwashed children. What are we going to do to help these children? How are we going to take them away from these brainwashing? How are we going to rehabilitate them? These are all questions we need to ask ourselves and we need to work together on this in one cause to make sure that this stops with Sudan. It doesn't continue anymore. I don't want to see this again in any other African country. Because remember, we are African and we are going to stand with everybody. We are going to stand with Egyptians. We are going to stand with the people in Zimbabwe. We're going to stand with people in Nigeria. It doesn't matter if they don't want to stand with us. Because that's not the kind of people we are. We stand for humans. That is what it means to be Sudanese. That's what it means to me anyway. Is that we don't care 
This revolution has taught us to not care about your color. I don't care about your religion. I don't care what your beliefs are. I don't care what color you like. I don't care what food you like. You breathe like me, you bleed like me, we stand together. And no other person is gonna die. No one is dying anymore for this. I don't even want to swear, no one's dying for this nonsense anymore. None of our sisters are going to be raped anymore. You are not going to break us because we are strong. We are, we are united, you, we are together. Always, stand together. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Ashab Bahrain. Yeah. Yeah. We must together, we must stand There are over 40 videos on street cam and the great thing about the channel is that the protests that take place every Saturday is recorded by street cam and uploaded onto YouTube and everything that has happened since February is available for you to see, but not only do we have protests, we have Brexit, knife crime, even this week, street cam was outside Downing Street, we was outside Westminster, we was outside the Queen Elizabeth II Centre, and we was outside Buckingham Palace when Theresa May tendered her resignation to the Queen and when Boris Johnson was crowned as the new Prime Minister of this great country. You can see all of those videos on street cam. It's not just about the Sudanese protests, it's about Brexit, knife crime, but we are actually here to raise awareness about issues that are important to the average person on the streets. And we are here campaigning, helping and raising awareness. That is why street cam is getting better. And please comment. And what street cam is trying to do, we are looking now for 1,000 subscribers before Christmas, so let's see if we can do it. Let's get a thousand subscribers, and once we get a thousand subscribers, we can share the message further, and we can continue raising awareness on your behalf. Good afternoon, ladies. You spoke not long ago, and you spoke very passionately. We met last week for the first time. Let's introduce yourself again and we can talk to the lady next to you. So, what's your name? My name is Nekla. Um, I'm a freelance journalist, freelance digital marketer, now turned Sudanese activist. But yeah, that's a little brief into who I am. So, who's this young lady next to you? This is my little sister. This is your little sister? Yeah. So, are you little training little her? <laughs> so, good afternoon, sis. Hi. Good afternoon. My see, see, the first thing, you have to learn to talk a bit louder. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tafer. Um, I'm an accountant. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is this your first Sudanese demonstration? Because I don't recall seeing you before. No, actually, I go almost every week. Oh, yeah, my but, God. Where have you been hiding? Yeah. Too many people. Yeah. Yeah. Too many people around. So. so how comes I haven't spoken to you yet? I think maybe just because I'm hiding in the corner somewhere. <laughs> See, now you've come forward. You cannot hide anymore. So tell me more well, about... I've just been inspired, really, like, by everyone's, like, passion and, like, the chants that they make up. So that's what I wanted to do. And just to, like, get involved more. 
and that's what I did today. See this young lady down here, yeah? Your sister. She speaks passionately about issues in Sudan. Has she influenced you? Definitely, yeah. And every time she comes up and speaks, I'm always like shocked and like just pumped, honestly, yeah. Did you realise she was such a great speaker? Uh, yeah, I always knew she was like a great speaker and I knew that she um, just knew what she was talking about and she had, she had always had the power to influence people. Um, and now she's had that chance to sort of do that today. So how comes I've yet to hear little sis speaking? I've heard you sing, you sing sweet, but I haven't heard you get up and talk. Maybe one day, but I think I'm more of a dancer and singer than a speaker. So does that mean today we're going to hear you and see you <laughs> dancing as well? Aye, do that again, why? So let me go and speak to this seasoned journalist. So your speech today was very passionate, but let me focus specifically on this week has been a historical week because a new prime minister was elected and their office is just over the road. But during your speech, you mentioned Boris. Why was it important for you to mention Boris on such a historical week and location? Because I think, like, obviously he is now our new Prime Minister. So my main point was we're here, so no one else previous has helped. What are you going to do? Are you just going to hide away and tend down in the street and not really say anything or not really do anything and ignore that we are standing here almost every single Saturday telling you clearly what our, what our requests are? And as well, we can't hide away from what Britain has been involved in. Like, we keep on having these conversations about don't sell arms, don't sell arms, and they come out and they say, OK, we condemn this. But what is your condemnation doing? It's it's not really doing anything right now because people are still dying. Rape is still being used as a, um, as a tool for political gain. People are still being tortured in prison. These things are still happening. So what are you going to do about it? Like, I feel like in my point was just to make sure that, yeah, OK, you've just stepped into office, but sorry, mate, there's a lot that you've got to deal with right now. There's a lot of things that you need to sort out in the UK, dealing with Brexit and everything else, but also understanding where your hands have been and what damage you have literally just put yourself into. Do you know something? You speak with such eloquence. Just over the road, we have number 10 Downing Street. Shall we take a walk over there and stand in front of the gates and you can speak to Boris? Scream at him, yeah. Come, let's go, sister. Are you coming? This is street camp. Oh, down the street is down there. So walk to down the street and I'm going to follow you. So this is street cam coming to you live and direct from opposite Downing Street where today the Sudanese community are campaigning against injustices in Sudan. And well, what we are doing now, we are walking to Downing Street and this young lady's gonna speak. This young lady's gonna speak to Boris right outside of the gates of number 10 Downing Street. And this is the power of street camp. So we're now outside of number 10 Downing Street, the gate of number 10 Downing Street, where our great speaker is now going to give a message to Boris Johnson who was elected as the leader of the Conservative Party and he became Prime Minister of this great country only a few days ago. So what do you want to say to Boris? My message to Boris is I would invite him to come out to understand why we're here, to understand what the Jeremy Hunt has been involved in, to understand what we can do to ensure that we're not meddling, but we're not supplying and we're not being complicit in any foreign wars that are happening. Because right now, the EU, unfortunately, their money has funded these militias 
to kill and torture and persecute people on the basis of religion, on the basis of colour, on the basis of anything that they can find to discriminate. And as our Prime Minister, we have a massive Sudanese community here, but it's not just a Sudanese issue, is it? It's an issue that's been faced in many countries. So what are we going to do about it? What is our Prime Minister going to do about it? What are we going to do to make sure that we are not complicit in anything that's happening and that we're not getting involved and we're not meddling with other people's affairs and we let countries deal with their issues themselves without being any complicit and standing aside and condemnation if you're handing if you're funding wars like thankfully we've managed to make it a law that we could not fund um, and sell weapons to Saudi Arabia that's been killing people that's the kind of action that we need we shouldn't be funding these kind of things like we're complaining about NHS money what well, I'm walking around in streets of London that I like Honestly, our hazard, for what? For you to tell me that our, our money's been sent for weapons? It makes no sense. Like, we need to understand that that is basically funding it. That is basically you saying stand with them. So no, come outside and say that this is not what the British people represent. Thank you. Tell me, have you learnt from this interaction just now? Yeah, I think um, it puts things into perspective. Um, you, you no, let me get you with Downing the Street in the background, so turn around a bit. So, yeah, say that again. It puts things into perspective. How? How does it put things into perspective? Like, I understand how, like, the UK are related to all these, all the problems that are going on in, like, African countries, and that we really do need to stand together until um, we sort of get what we want and keep trying to reach out to them. Yeah. A lot has happened since I last spoke to you. Let's focus specifically on the deal that's been reached in Sudan with the relative parties. Are you happy? I'm not 100% happy with the deal, but we're waiting for the final deal to be signed and agreed. And that is when I'll be happy. That's when the Sudanese people will decide their, their uprising is successful or not. What I've heard and I've read is that there could be negotiations of an amnesty for those who committed crimes, for those who Absolutely killed. Not. Absolutely not. There is no such negotiation and the Sudanese people will not and will not accept such thing. Everybody has to be uh, go to court and if he's found guilty, then they'll have to pay the penalty. So that is part of coming out here and campaigning and fighting for freedom, peace and, and justice. justice. So the justice... The justice, emphasising the justice. So the emphasis is those yeah. who have committed crimes must be held accountable exactly. in a court of law. Exactly. Exactly. Why are you out here today? I'm here because of the martyrs. Uh, they, 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 don't de um, they don't deserve the silence. Like, even if we get our, um, our, like, our rights or the, the civilian government, we still need to um, like, raise awareness for the martyrs and honour them as well. So that's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> So tell me, why have you not watched Street Cam yet? Um, I haven't got an answer to that, to be honest. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. So how do you find out what is going on within the Sudanese community? Uh, word of mouth, really. But now you've got a channel. 
street cam. So make sure you watch and make sure you subscribe. So you're going to be watching street cam? Yeah. You're going to subscribe? Yeah. How about you? Yeah. So tell me, why are you down here in front of number 10 Downing Street today? We're here in support of our country. We're here in support of the people that have been suffering, um, so the people that have been subject to the brutality of the Janjaweed and the current government. But tell me something. When you see what is going on in Sudan, how does it make you feel? Upsetting, really. That like, really sad because, like, that's our country, and yeah, basically that's all. Does it make you realise how lucky you are living in this great country? Yeah, we're lucky to be here. So tell me something. Just imagine the military leaders in Sudan is watching this video. What do you want to say to them? Um, stop what you're doing. I don't know. What would you say? So I don't know. What was the question? Just imagine the military leaders in Sudan are watching this video. What do you want to say to them? Like, what's happening to the people of Sudan? If it was that happening to their family, what they would do? And, like, how they would respond? And the final question to you. Um, our people are patient, our people are strong, and we will be victorious. And what is so important about this protest today is that it comes only a few days after Boris Johnson was elected to power here in England and he was elected as the leader of the Conservative Party and in consequence he became the Prime Minister and only a few moments ago we saw one of the Sudanese speakers who mentioned Boris's name in her speech. I followed her over to Downing Street, which is only literally 50 yards behind me. And she spoke in front of the gates of Downing Street. And in doing so, she had an interaction with a gentleman. And he is now over here with us chanting, singing, and he's learning more about what is going on within the Sudanese community. But it's been an amazing week in England and also in Sudan. The protesters down here are not happy in regards to the fact that the military leaders in Sudan are asking for an amnesty for those who committed atrocities back home in Sudan, but they will not allow that to happen. Justice means if you've killed someone, you must stand trial in a court of law, and if you are found guilty, you will be sentenced in accordance with the laws of that country but the people here as you can hear behind me they are chanting they are singing and their chanting reflects poetry which they have sung for the last eight months and they will continue to do so until Sudan is free and those who committed awful crimes will be sentenced and there will be freedom, peace and justice for all. Subscribe, comment and hit the thumbs.